Welcome to the Monday morning devotional. And this week is exciting as we get prepared to come back together for worship this Sunday, May the 10th. And want to give you a review of what was announced. There's a lot of moving parts and want to keep sharing with you what we're trying to do. So there's confusion about churches and the uh, governor's order. I, I know there's confusion because a couple of weeks ago I was on a meeting, a Zoom meeting where you're on the computer with the governor with many other pastors with a group called the Texas Pastors Council, which is just a group of pastors uh, staying on top of what's happening. And so the it's not the 25% capacity like restaurants. It is social distancing in the sanctuary, which almost is the same thing. It's limited capacity. But so we are honoring the six foot social distancing at this time next few weeks until there are new determinations made. With that said, for example, give you a little understanding of what we're trying, every other pew will not be used in the sanctuary. Every other pew. Of course that limits the number of pews. And on the pews that are used, we've gone through and seen what we can do Families will sit together, but then there must be six foot from the, that, the family. So it depends on families and who all comes at those Sundays. That's why we are asking you to uh, follow that link on the email that puts you into a registration block where you can sign up and we're able to see who signs up and look at the numbers and see what we need to do. Uh, we're trying to determine what's going to be the response for Sunday because we know some people who are still very vulnerable don't need to be coming. There's also others that are just not ready in light of everything. So we don't know what that number is that's going to be waiting to come. So we're trying to see how many want to be here Sunday, whether or not to do overflow in Pearl Martin Hall and the Welcome Center, because technology-wise, Pearl Martin Hall and the, tech, the uh, Welcome Center would be better. We don't know whether or not there's going to be overflow. If we need to do it, we'll do it. And then that way, this registration will we'll know what to expect. Now, on top of that, we are doing the Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, traditional worship service. We call it traditional, meaning it's going to look like 815. And it's going to be Wednesdays at 9. We chose Wednesday because, as I said... Sundays and Wednesdays have that feel of a church day. We could have made it any day. We wanted to separate, not have two services on the same day. That's too much required there to make that acceptable. So we, once we decided not to have two services on Sunday, we decided to go to Wednesday. 9 a.m. early, just like Sunday, 8.15 is early. It's going to look like 8.15. That service is May 13th, not this Wednesday, the next Wednesday. We feel like that will help with the limited capacity, and we feel like many people that would come to 8.15 are they're available to come Wednesday at 9 o'clock. 
that will go on as long as we need to really be limited in our attendance. Don't know how long that is. We just have to wait and see. So I hope that helps you with some of the, the situation. If the registration and the link and the computer, if that's not you, call the church office. That's why we're here. Melissa and Cindy, ready to help you and help make this happen. Please don't hesitate to call the church office. And finally, I want to just keep saying, we don't want anybody feeling like they have to be here this weekend or next Wednesday. This is going to be a slow process and we want people to take care of themselves and watch how to move forward. So today I want to look at the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, if you turn there with me. Joshua is that real exciting book where after the 40, uh, the days in the wilderness, or the 40 years in the wilderness rather, the 40 years in the wilderness of the Israelites coming out of Egypt, finally they get to go into the promised land. And it's not simple going into the promised land. So Joshua chapter 3 is a scripture where it talks about how to get ready to cross the Jordan River into the promised land. And as you can imagine, it's a significant move that is, involves spiritual uh, means, not just physical. Joshua 3 1 through 5. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove, and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. <clears throat> Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Let me remind you of the context. Moses has been the prominent, powerful leader of the people of Israel for 40 years, brought them out of Egypt, navigated the desert, did so many profound things, and then he died. Joshua took over. God promised he'd be with him, and he took over. Nobody doubted that. That's fine. So we have a change of leadership that is huge, significant. We have the Ark of the Covenant. You probably know that's that small box gold embroidered uh, container that had some pretty significant special things in it. We won't get into that right now. But the Ark of the Covenant was a, a real powerful symbol of God's presence among the people. And the Ark of the Covenant was carried, always carried before the people and they followed it. And Joshua goes through, the officers go through the camp and give instruction that they need to get ready for tomorrow because we're going to cross the Jordan and you need to stand back or stay back from the ark and the men carrying it. Let there be some distance 
So there's perspective and, and line of sight. But I think there's also a spiritual application of the separation from the holiness of God and the people and the respect, the danger, the awareness of God's holiness and following him. So let me read that again in light of that background. Joshua rose early in the morning and set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel lodged there before they crossed over. After three days, the officers went through the camp, commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, you shall set out from your place and go. There shall be a space between you and it. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. I have to comment that we're at a special time of moving forward right now, and we've never experienced what we've been experiencing before. We hope there's a new day ahead as the people of God in the world. He's left us here to be salt and light, to be a powerful testimony to who God is. So I pray that this pandemic and all that's come with it sets us up to be seen as God's people as we move forward. And Joshua said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We're on a journey and we as God's people need to always know he's up to something. God has an agenda. The world is agenda driven. Everywhere you turn, everybody has an agenda. Well, we need to follow God's agenda sanctify yourselves. Notice the responsibility of getting ready to cross the Jordan. You have a great leader in Joshua. You have the Ark of the Covenant. You have God's promise of the promised land. But the people must sanctify themselves. Take responsibility. Be involved and go forward. Just a few thoughts very quickly that I looked at this. The mission doesn't change when mighty leaders do. We always need leaders all through our lives. There have been prominent people in my life, but they move on, they change, they die, whatever. The mission doesn't change because it's God's mission. The mission requires courage even if it's God's will. Now one of the most famous scriptures are in Joshua. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We can either have fear because we're afraid of something or be dismayed discouraged, run out of steam. You got to be careful. And all of that takes courage, even if it's God's will. I remember when I first realized it kind of dawned on me, wait a minute. Every time I turn around, it looks like when people follow God's will, it's a challenge. You have to have courage. And what I realized is, I kind of assumed if you're in the center of God's will, it's smooth sailing. Not true. It takes courage. And then the mission is realized when God's people follow God's presence. We always need to look for where God is. The Ark of the Covenant in the distance, keep a perspective, follow God's presence. Cross the Jordan and be the people God wants you to be. We're on a journey as God's people. We've never been this way before. 
that we are with God. We follow Him, His direction. And it's a wonderful, exciting opportunity to be His people today. Let's pray. Lord, thank You again for Your Word. It's a light unto our path, a lamp for us. It's a compass. Thank You for it. Lord, help us to get ready for this Sunday. Again, I pray for the process. Very little stress. Just opportunity to do what you lead us to do. I pray for those who are not sure about what to do, that they would come to terms and have peace. Father, we pray for our leaders, our governor, our judge, our mayor, our president in these crucial times. Let us honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.